and here we are at the back of the car. You guys can see we uh, already have some leaks going on, um, which really sucks because we really shouldn't have any leaks based on how many times I've replaced this thing. Uh, looks like I need to get my fuel sending uh, wire here too. I forgot to hook that up, so I'm going to find where that wire is. Uh, when I redid the trunk floor, I believe it is up off and labeled, and I think I tucked it up inside the car itself. Uh, usually, I found just using a pair of channel locks works rather well for just turning that guy um, and getting it right off. So you see, I mean, it came off rather easy, and then I am going to be replacing my fuel line up here too. Uh, whenever I was working on the uh, rear floor, uh, I bent the crap out of it. And then whenever I was doing the floors as well, up underneath like the driver's side portion area of the car, I uh, bent it up a whole bunch to get it out of the way. So right now the, the car isn't getting fuel. And I have some of this braided like flex line off of Amazon that I'm going to plan on using. Uh, it's like rubber. I think it's actually made for technically EFI. Wind blowing that right back at me, but uh, I think it's technically made more so for EFI um, diameter, so it should withstand the little PSI that the carbureted engines need. Uh, after looking around online, carbureted engines only need about I think it's like three to seven PSI to really be successful. Um, so I do have an inline fuel pump by Edelbrock, which I will go over, but it's much less than that. Uh, just got to kind of wiggle this guy out of there. And she's still leaking. When I looked at it, or checked it out earlier, it didn't have hardly any fluid in it, so or any fuel in it, so I didn't think that even this much would be coming out, but obviously I'm wrong. Uh, I'm going to let this drain. I'm going to go grab a uh, ratchet and socket and start taking off these hose clamps up here. Uh, I thought I'd be able to pull it out without removing those, but obviously it's not working. So, give me one minute and I'll be right back. back. I'm going to go ahead and just take these uh, off. These were just some hose clamps that I used from the auto parts store, just generic. Uh, nothing fancy about them. Dang. Okay, we got a lot more fuel in there than I originally thought. That's too big. Last video, I went ahead and did that uh, rhino liner or uh, raptor liner. So I'm not too worried about getting all that fuel on the fuel tank. Obviously, once I get the new one installed, I will be wiping everything down as best as I can. And that clip's like broken. I'm not making it easy. Keep 
letting that drain for a minute. something just cut this line off uh, looks like it's gonna be the best route see if there is any differences for just a universal one versus a uh, more Mustang specific one uh, but yeah so that, that's how to get it out I mean as you can see it's really not that bad uh, unfortunately if anybody can do this job without getting fuel on them well, let me know how uh, right away I'm looking at it then you bring you guys over here to show you um, one of the things I am seeing that Oh, I guess the hose clamp got stuck down in there. Um, interesting. Well, that's not coming out of there. Uh, anyway, wow, that fuel just ate away at that rhino iron, too, which sucks. Have to go back and repaint that. Um, so let me get you guys actually over here. Sorry about this transition. I know it's going to be kind of difficult. I got a hose clamp stuck in there, so I'm going to have to fish that out of there but you can see I have a whole bunch of automotive grease and stuff I'll just use my finger to show you uh, up in this channel in order to try and help where that gasket fits in there um, yeah it's pretty gross but uh, we'll just go ahead and get that out of there grab a paper towel 
try and clean up as much of that out of there as we can. Anyway, I put all that in there to hold that gasket in place. Uh, and it, it kind of worked as you saw, but like not probably as much as it needed to. And uh, since I've installed this, I have put ooh, so much freaking crap up there to try and keep it from leaking. Um, over the like four or five times I've done this, I'm, I'm really not surprised. Um, that we still do have a lot of stuff just kind of there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean that up off camera, get my hands cleaned up, get some gloves on, and uh, come back and do a comparison of the lock rings and the sets uh, on uh, versus each other so we can see if there's a difference. Okay, so today, guys, we're going to be working on getting the fuel system, fuel line, uh, fuel sending unit and everything all good to go on the Mustang. I believe this was a Mustangs Unlimited part from uh, Dan over at Maryland Mustang, but I don't have the little wrapper package on there anywhere. So that is the part number, L0003. So what's interesting about this uh, fuel lock shank ring set, uh, I have done this like three or four times with various lock rings from the auto parts store. So uh, in my last video, I did the gas tank uh re refurbished it repainted it and everything and it came with a lock ring and set but the thing just leaked uh didn't matter what i did i threw like silicone sealant in there it still eat away the gasoline would eat away the silicone the sealant i used some stuff that was ready for fuel and eventually it would start leaking again um, and i think that's because the gasket that it came with either got pinched or uh, just wasn't seated correctly so as you can see, this is interesting because it's a big square gasket. So it's got to sit pretty much just perfect in order to actually get into the um, fuel filler and not leak. So the way this works is the gasket here. This piece goes right in there and then it should, if I remember correctly, actually it goes this way. Yeah, this way. So this turns and these little grooves here where it's raised so that portion right there at the bottom where it's raised is how it tightens up. So these actually aren't even all that tight. Uh, I've done all the tricks when it comes to adding a little bit of grease to this, when it goes up into the actual fuel tank, that way it doesn't pinch, it doesn't move. A lot of times when you start tightening, you know, this guy, as you tighten it, it'll actually spin the gasket and it'll kind of come out or bow out. It won't stay flat. So if you put a little like Vaseline or a little grease on there, it is help, uh, made to help post to uh, <laughs> keep it in that little groove, which will make more sense when I get to the fuel tank here in a second. Um, but unfortunately, it'll hold for a little bit and then mine starts leaking. After I did the gas tank, I didn't have this yet and I went ahead and put the gas tank on for the video. Uh, so I'm gonna be working underneath the car, uh, putting this guy on. Uh, and I think the reason mine hasn't been successful is just the uh, variances in aftermarket stuff that is uh, kind of more universal versus, you know, this nice thick gasket like it's supposed to have here. So uh, I'm gonna go get you guys set up on the tripod and we'll get underneath the car and we'll start working. All right guys, so I am back now with some gloves on after getting my hands already soaked. Um, I have to work on the fuel sending unit though a little bit. I'm just gonna set that up here. So I don't know what fuel sending unit this is. It did come with the tank when I first bought it. Uh, it looks like the float isn't leaking or cracked or anything. I mean, I've only driven this car maybe 100 miles altogether, uh, maybe like 150. So, um, anyway, here is the old gasket, and I'm going to go ahead and put the new one on top of it. So you can see my super scientific measurement here that the new one is actually slightly smaller. And if you look at them, they are pretty much the same depth, but this new one is definitely a little bit smaller, which I think could be the answer. Uh, this bigger one just isn't quite sealing, which is explained how come it is obviously leaking a little bit. Furthermore, when you look at how this is set up on these lock rings, so um, they seem to be very, very similar. Uh, this one seems to be just a tad wider than the new one that I have. Um, so that could be how come it's leaking. And then if you see right here where my thumb is on that ridge, so the way it works is you just kind of slide it up and it sits in this ridge. 
and that's what holds it tight. If you look at this one, they're more pronounced. This ridge and this back one here is, is, is way more pronounced, it looks like. Uh, it's a little bit more like steeper right here. My index finger is kind of rubbing over. So I'm thinking that'll help be a little bit smaller, uh, pushing up in there and being a little bit uh, tighter as well, just because, you know, like these ridges are just a little bit more than those one it looks like. Now, this one is more exaggerated on the end, on the uh, right side here where my index finger is. I'll try and get that in the view there. So yeah, it's a little bit more exaggerated on the right uh, versus a little bit more tame here on the right. Um, and again, I think that's just because this is universal and this could potentially be bent up a little bit more, a little bit less from me uh, just over tightening it and trying to tighten it a million times because I always had issues. Uh, yep, so this is the fuel sending unit. Um, nothing special about it as far as I can tell. Uh, I believe this is considered a mechanical fuel sending unit and the only thing we have to wire up which I have all the wiring for the car kind of tucked back uh, over there uh, in the back seat is the uh, fuel level send or fuel level sending unit yeah so what that does is actually tells our gauge where our fuel levels at uh, I'm no longer gonna be keeping this like rubber hose I'm gonna have to get that off there before I uh, get down to below the car and I do have some of that AN fittings which I believe I already showed uh, I don't think unfortunately AN fittings are going to work on the uh, fuel sending unit. Uh, the ones that I have, they need to like screw in. So I'll have to look into that. But for the time being, I'm just gonna run the hose with some hose clamps uh, just so I can move my car. Right now it can't move. So it's just sitting on the street. I'd like to be able to move it, uh, especially cause we are about to have some work done on our house for the roof and get that tree finally removed. Uh, yeah, that's been a whole fun time with the insurance and yeah, not fun so i'd like to be able to move this car especially when they get in there and get work done and uh as i really want to start driving this thing too uh, but anyway so i'm gonna work on getting this hose off and then when i go back to installing all this i will get you guys back on camera okay guys so um this is the fuel line i have here just some this is a some like braided rubber line something off of amazon it is by a company called um Evil Energy. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough to get to the rear of the vehicle. It kind of stops right around in the rear axle. So I'm gonna have to get something in order to connect the two. Uh, right now, because I actually would really wanna be able to move this car, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, hold off, uh, which kind of sucks, and order some more of that off Amazon. I'm gonna get a measurement right now, see how much I need to order, and then I'll have to complete this video then which really sucks i was hoping to be able to move this car today but it just is what it is um, so that'll end it for now but i'll pick this one back up when i get the uh, new uh, evil energy um it was evil energy i believe uh fuel line from amazon uh and then off camera i'm just gonna look at my edelbrock fuel line, uh, fuel pump and this is just the small two three and a half psi which i might need to get a bigger one i'm not entirely sure and i'm going to look at getting that mounted uh, at the rear of the vehicle uh, only thing about getting that guy in the rear of the vehicle is you do want it to be mounted below the fuel sending unit which is looking much much better there's no fuel leaking so I wiped everything off but with the gravity you would want that fuel sending unit to sit below or i'm sorry that inline fuel pump below uh, and unfortunately i have no idea how i would get it there uh, i've only seen one guy online i think it was on binge mustang forum or facebook where they made a mount that they welded up to the top brought it all the way down and it sat right here uh, to be honest i'm not a big fan of that i would like it to be kind of tucked up uh, so i need to do some research i would much rather build a amount you know uh, mine's coming up the passenger side and uh it stops right there i just don't have any more slack i could probably get a little bit more maybe get it to about this area uh i would love to more so mount it kind of up here maybe build a bracket uh and kind of keep it tucked up out of the way 
and away from the exhaust and the rear differential. When that guy had it, he had it up here mounted and it kind of came at an angle and down. And uh, I was just thinking if you ever had to get to the rear differential, it'd be a pain. And uh, I, it, I mean, while it served its purpose and it looked better than anything I could think of, uh, it's just not exactly what I wanted to do. So uh, I think that's gonna be my route is I'm going to uh, get some fuel line and probably make a plate that's gonna connect uh, to the trunk right around in this area, get some fuel line going to it, have a fuel filter, which based on line, you want like a 100 micron fuel filter and then that inline fuel pump with the 12 micron uh, fuel filter already kind of built onto it should, you know, bring it out about to here and that'll be perfect for me then to run it up. And uh, I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna run the fuel line. But uh, bear with me in this camera angle. I think I'm going to follow the line and go up and then uh, run it kind of up through here and around this uh, exhaust mount and kind of follow the frame rail, the rear, rear torque box and down. I think that's going to be the best way to mount it. Uh, I'm just going to use some, I'm thinking self tappers uh, or I might weld on a nut or something. That way, if I ever got to change it out, I can. And I'm going to run it down the passenger side. Uh, bear with the camera angle here, but if I run it down the passenger side, uh, that works really well for the carburetor because uh, it's already on the passenger side. And uh, I should be able then to take this, take this line, kind of tuck it up and out of the way. Um, I do plan on running AC one day, so I know that, that area is already going to be pretty crowded. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to look around at ordering um, inline fuel pump, uh, the filter, because I don't have a 100 micron filter. Uh, so I'm going to look at doing that, and then I got some metal. I want something to be a little bit uh, heavier than 20 gauge, uh, probably 16. Uh, that way I can go ahead and get that uh, plate maybe made, be able to weld it up there because uh, I still need to go back and finish welding up some stuff on the bottom side of the car and uh, sanding a whole bunch and undercoating it. So, um, But it's about to start raining it looks like, so I think I'm going to call that for the day. Unfortunately, it's going to be nothing but raining for like the next week. So I think I'm going to actually uh, turn my attention to body working the fenders and you guys will see all the primer and everything at a later, uh, later time. Uh, so yep, that's going to be it for now. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions on this fuel line to keep it from leaking, definitely let me know. Uh, I'm going to try and post this one a couple days earlier. I try to do one a week. Uh, I think I'm going to post this one up and probably have two pretty close together in a couple days. Uh, that way, if anybody has any suggestions or any way to kind of test out that fuel filter or fuel sending unit to make sure it doesn't leak, to let me know. And then with any help in regards to getting the inline fuel pump back here and where I should mount it. Uh, if anybody has any good ideas, definitely let me know. All right, well, thanks, guys. Have a good one. Okay, guys, so we're going to continue working on the fuel system for the car. Uh, I have a whole bunch of pieces that come, finally came in. And... Uh, I will get to all those, but right now I'm going to work on the routing. I think when I left off, I had some like AN braided line off of uh, Amazon, and that is right there. Uh, but I didn't have a way to secure it to the car. Uh, I plan on following pretty much the stock route. So, what I plan on doing is using some of these hose clamps, and I just bought a whole bunch of them. And what I'm going to do is take the head of this weld it to the car like that then put this hose clamp over and then I have the corresponding nuts so uh, the head will be welded and then the nut over the end and that will give me more enough room to run the wine through there hold it up out of the way and if I ever need to service it I could just take off the nut and actually be able to uh, get to it rather easily instead of dealing with <coughs> um, some self tapping screws and putting more holes in there that I don't really need. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because if I ever do end up getting a new motor for this car, uh, if it ever blows, which it might, we don't know the 
really the status of when it was rebuilt and has bored 40 over, I believe in about the 90s. Um, so I don't know how many miles this thing has on it. I don't know anything else. Uh, as you guys saw, I did do the head gaskets, the heads, uh, intake, uh, carburetor, um, exhaust gaskets, exhaust uh, headers all the way. Uh, did all the gaskets on the bottom side of the motor. Um, so pretty much everything besides the pistons, rings, the deck, and then I didn't do anything with the front drive, so the water pump, the alternator. Um, didn't do anything with those. So I don't know how this engine is. It had pretty good compression when I uh, tested it when I first bought it and I could feel it. Uh, so um, I don't remember what that was, but at that time it was seemed pretty solid and good to go. So um, I think we still got quite a few miles left in her. Uh, but uh, anyway, that being said, if it ever does go, I should be able to take these off and I can make some mounts because I have to run a return line. Uh, when I was looking that up, most of the vehicles you have to run a return line. Uh, but again, I, I'm sure there's other ways around that, but I'm not too familiar with it. Uh, so right now, I'm going to go ahead and work on routing and mounting up all of the uh, line. I'm going to take you down below the car. So right now, um, I don't have any fuel system as you can see, and I plan on running a 12 volt inline fuel pump, and the way I'm going to do that is, sorry about the camera angle there, I'm going to mount it just, uh, I think right here on the bottom side of the uh, trunk pan. Uh, I do know that it's supposed to be down below, gravity fed, but uh, I don't like anywhere where it would sit, I would think it'd be goofy. I saw, you know, some mounts coming all the way down and sitting, oh man, these camera angles are hard. Sitting, uh, you know, way down here and I think it would just be too close to the ground and everything like that. And then if you're at the service, the rear differential. So I'm gonna mount it up high, which uh, is definitely not preferred. Uh, but when I bought this car, it had a uh, inline fuel pump and it was mounted, I mean, just sitting on the engine bay. Let me move this stuff out of the way. It was uh, sitting on the engine bay, and it was just right over here in this front right corner. Um, front driver's side corner, I should say. So it was just sitting right here, and you can see the little tube uh, that I replaced because the other one was leaking fuel everywhere so it was just sitting all the way up here and the car ran I could drive it and everything like that so I think even just getting it closer is going to be fine so that's what I'm gonna do uh, just gonna get it up out of the way and uh, call it good from there uh, I do have uh, some other stuff that I will go over and I'm gonna set everything up but for right now I'm gonna keep on running the wire uh, I'm just gonna weld up those um, nuts I'm sorry screws and then get everything kind of plumbed up to hopefully inside the engine bay. Once I get it plumbed up into the engine bay, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm doing here, as well as back by the gas tank itself. Uh, what I'm gonna do back there, because I do have some pieces that are just not uh, working yet. So I'll get back with you guys with an update. All right guys, so it's actually the next day here. I just didn't have enough time to quite finish up the fuel system. So here it is. We have our new lock ring uh, set from Maryland Mustang here and everything looks like it's going good. Haven't had any leaks at all. Uh, and what I did was I just ran a rubber hose from the auto parts store up to the Edelbrock Micro uh, inline fuel pump. And that one does like three to seven PSI, which is great for the uh, carbureted applications. Uh, what I left off in my other video, I was going through and making essentially the studs for the fuel line amount too. As you can see, I got one up there and I ran them the entirety of the car. So I kind of got one up in there and then ran one all the way up through the frame rail and I tried to do my best to go ahead and follow the original location for the car. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but for some reason I was having a hard time welding the uh, bolts at first until I got the hang of it. So 
So you can see I kind of got one right there coming over to here. And then I'm going to go back with my grinder and cut this guy off so you don't really see it. Um, and you see, yep, just have it going all the way down through the frame rail. And then coming up through here, following the frame rail, going up underneath that brake line. Up and through to the original location. Coming into the engine bay, I need to get a grommet. That's definitely one thing I forgot that I needed. Ran up through the engine bay, kind of right through there, behind some wiring for my coils and everything. And the engine bay is just a, a mess. And I have a ton of extra line um, right here, bundled up, and then I'll also go into the carb. So I have a ton of extra line because I was trying to use all AN fittings. Um, as you can see, I don't have any. So I bought the Edelbrock little kit that connects to the carburetor right here. It goes down kind of where I have my heater core hoses and everything. It kind of comes out to the front. Uh, I think it's about the front of the head right around in this area. And then I have AN fittings that kind of go and route it like a 45. And my plan was to kind of just route it right around the water. Uh, this little PCV or was that the water thermostat little hose and kind of near that pulley unfortunately so maybe tuck it up maybe over here behind the distributor I'm not entirely sure and then get it out of the engine bay uh, using AN fittings has been probably the biggest challenge and it's been a very expensive uh, learning experience I guess you could say uh, I mean even just buying them off of Amazon uh, I probably have I'm not even joking, close to 20 different fittings uh, and they just don't seem to want to work for my application. So for the engine bay compartment, I do have everything. I dry fitted it all. Everything's good to go here. So uh, pretty neat, um, fine. And then as I get to the back of the vehicle, that's where I start having just a plethora of problems. So I bought on Amazon. I'm gonna uh, flip you guys here in just a minute. On Amazon, 100 micron fuel filter and my original plan was to go ahead and mount it next to the uh, inline fuel pump and then I was gonna run it let me zoom out run it from here to the micron or the uh, 100 micron uh, fuel filter and then from there straight over into the fuel pump I cannot get a in fittings for any of that stuff that work the uh, filter came with a in fittings and I can't get that to work with the micron fuel pump. So I've been trying to get some barb uh, fittings for the uh, inline fuel pump. Uh, those don't fit the fuel pump, even though they're made by the same company. And as far as I know, they should. Um, but after doing some clicking around, they actually have a different size. So hopefully that one should alleviate that. So regardless, I think I'm gonna go rubber hose up to the 100 micron uh, fuel filter and then rubber hose from the fuel filter to, to the micro fuel pump. And then just as it is uh, right there, just use the barb with a hose clamp. So I think the all of that time and energy trying to get to look cool with AN fittings, uh, I think I'm gonna end up using one, which kind of sucks. So I will be posting probably a whole bunch of those for sale, might hang on to them for a car down the road. Um, you know, just getting anything to fit onto here that actually works. Uh, I ordered a couple different ones and, and, and nothing fits, nothing secure. It has like a little union and everything to hold it back and it just, it isn't working, so. But anyway, so I got the micro uh, fuel pump from Edelbrock on and this is how I wired it up. I do know that it's supposed to be below the fuel uh, sending unit. However, I just can't really get it down there. And my car ran with that and it was up inside the engine bay. So I'm sure it's gonna be better even just sitting right there just grounded it to itself it's just not tight uh and then i just grabbed power from the fuel sending unit the little gauge uh, i believe that pulses and that's my only concern so i don't know if that's continuous uh, live wire or not i mean i know when you turn the accessory on that's when that gauge kicks on uh, but i don't know if that's sending out like a pulse signal so i don't know if that will cause that to pulse when it's uh running or not i'm not sure so you can see i just use a little wire tap uh, in order to just give it a shot and see what happens. Um, if everything does work, I will 
uh, and there's no leaks and everything, then I probably will look at redoing it with the AN fittings. Uh, big thing is uh, right now, I'm just trying to get this over to the body shop so I can drive it and uh, take it over and start getting some coats on paint. Um, I have other videos of doing a whole bunch of body work, but been busy, very, very busy. Um, you'll see that. You'll see everything later on in different videos. So uh, it's just finding very, proven to be very, very difficult to find anybody that actually wants to paint an old car. So I may do it myself. I am looking into that, uh, how to do that myself. And I'm fine if I do it myself and accept that there's probably some flaws, but I feel like I've done all this work that I might as well just do it myself and, you know, say I've done it all. But that is going to conclude the um, fuel system on the Mustang. Uh, everything looks like it's good to go. Unfortunately, I don't have any gas, so I'm going to get some gas in there today and hopefully be able to test it all out. Um, and then I'll also just do a ton of cleanup now that I don't need all these tools. All the welding on the car is pretty much done. Um, all the panels are replaced. All the sheet metal is done. So I can get a lot of that out of here, uh, which is going to be nice. Get it back into storage and then vacuum out the car and get it all nice and clean. And then I will be going through and adding sound deadener through the transition pan. Uh, I don't know about the gas tank or anything. Uh, probably not because I think that needs to breathe. And then uh, same with these side portions. I don't think I'm going to add any there. So that's going to conclude this video. As always, you guys, uh, give me any comments, any suggestions. Uh, I know this fuel system with the, the, you know, the fuel pump, that's not where it's really supposed to be. But uh, considering my car ran with it all the way up in the engine bay, I think I'm pretty happy to just go ahead and leave it where it is. Which opens up more room in my engine bay, uh, which is awesome. Because down the line, I would like to... Uh, add AC so I think that sits right around in this area which then means I'll have to relocate my coil and er everything else so um, yeah I got a lot of little buttoning up to do that I'm going to do off camera but we'll get to that later on alright where are we leaving from? Yeah, that's the guy.